Hello everybody and welcome to another pre-modern video. We're going to be playing the Magical Knight Society League and this time around we're going to be bringing a black-white control playable Dead Guy Ale, however you want to call it. Uh, this is a deck that I have been very uh, excited about for a long time now. It's also uh, my first quote-unquote brew, an actual brew in the format, like a deck that I built from the ground up. So definitely very uh, near and dear to to me so uh, i made a couple of changes since uh, the last time that i played this deck in this channel i played a i think exactly this list with like very small change because i don't own a planner birth in in paper uh but uh, i played this list in an event this past weekend which i top four uh which then we split so <laughs> i don't know if i could have done better than that but um i think that the deck is very strong and it has some some very cool play patterns, and it's also very uh, satisfying and uh, just kind of hard to play as well. Uh, how you line up your spells matters a lot, and like how you sequence your things matters a lot. So uh, it's very rewarding to uh, to you know be patient and to to always choose the the best possible timing for for casting your spells. It also has a pretty important weakness in specifically the card Armageddon or Cataclysm, like either one of those. So uh, it has a very, very, <laughs> you know, it has an Achilles heel or like Kryptonite, however you want to call it. But uh, let's go over the deck real quick. So the changes that I made are that I added the fourth of JR's Verdict in the, in the main deck over a copy of Disenchant. Uh, Verdict is a card that was consistently very impressive, so I kind of have been wanting to make a make the addition for a while and i finally uh, gave in and tried it over the main deck disenchant and i have actually liked that so uh, yeah so i think that this is going to be the way that i build this moving forward the other change that i made for a while i've been saying that i would want to have access to the fourth copy of the Tenor dragon like this card is fantastic and it always overperforms so um having having the fourth copy over the fourth exalted angel has been something that i've been thinking about for a while i was also thinking about the idea of just cutting the fourth decree over the exalted angel but the truth of the matter is that decree is really really good against decks that have point removal uh, which you can otherwise effectively blank uh, so it, it's kind of nice in that sense also the fact that it cycles can sometimes save you um, sometimes all you need is to like dig a little bit deeper and like decree that's exactly that then we have three copies of skeletal crying this is has turned into one of my pet cards in the format uh, this card consistently uh, impresses and uh, you know like the first time you skeletal crying for x equals six in like the mid to late game that's when uh, that's when there's no coming back and you're just addicted to <laughs> to skeletal crying uh, besides that, we have some uh, point removal, source of plowshares, vindicate, uh, super flexible. We also have Wrath of God as a catch up mechanism. And then uh, Duress and Ferexian Furnace as well. These are anti combo cards, so like interactive, hand interactive cards. The mana base is like really, really clean, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I think playing cycling lands or like man lands in this deck is just straight up a mistake. Like it's just straight up wrong. I think that you want to be playing uh, most uh, basics, and uh, we're trying to do exactly that. So nine basic planes, and now ba nine basic swamps. That's what we have going on. And then a couple of copies of Reflecting Pool and the Caves of Colos. Honestly, the only reason why I have the two copies of Reflecting Pool is because of the infest that I have in the sideboard. This card has been really impressive uh, lately, and I have been very excited about having it in, in my sideboard. I feel like there are certain situations where infest uh, catches you up, uh, particularly against decks like Goblins and White Winnie, Flippy style decks. Infest is a card that can catch you up in situations where Engineered Plague cannot, and Infest being able to wipe out like, you know, Mother of Runes and uh, Meddling Mages and stuff like that, it can be a really big deal. Also, when your opponent is prepared for your engineer plagues out of Goblin with something like Goblin King, Infest just doesn't care. So uh, there are uh, plenty of situations that I have run into where Infest uh, just stabilizes you against Goblins where engineer plague would not have, like it would, may have bought you a turn at most. So uh, yeah, I, I do have two Infest, two engineer plague in my sideboard as a way to hedge against this. Engineer plague continues to be really, really good against other decks, right? Like uh, against all the Hermit decks, against... Uh, stuff like Devourer against stuff like Elves. All of these decks, uh, Engineer Plague is uh, just much, much better uh, than Infest, Enchantress as well. So having access to Plague is is still very important. So I just fixed that by doing like a 2-2 split. But uh, that's the reason for the Reflecting Pools, basically. I just want some extra black sources so I can cast Infest in time. 
if I did not have infest in my sideboard, I think I would turn one of these reflecting pools, probably even both of them, into uh, one more basic planes or one more basic swamp, like depending. Uh, maybe one, one and one of each. Uh, finally, we do have a couple of copies of Dust Bowl, and uh, that's you know the last card in the main deck. This card is pretty powerful, I think. And especially in a deck like this that you know eternal dragon plus dust bowl is a hell of a drug and when we go to the cyborg we see the third copy of dust bowl plenty of matchups where you want to go up to up to 27 lands and like doing so with a dust bowl can be very very powerful we also have turmoil script and haunting echo so i'm pairing these together because they do tend to come in against similar styles of decks uh, but also Tomot Script can save your ass because it's faster against decks like Replenish or even decks like Angry Hermit where Haunting Echoes may be a little bit too slow. Uh, then we have a Smother as a point removal against your Terrorwars of the world, against your Dreadnoughts of the world, and Plague and Infest I already just discussed. Uh, I'm also adding like two copies of Aura of Silence alongside the Extra Disenchant. The reason for the Auras is that I, I noticed that, first of all, this, this deck's mana can support it, especially with Eternal Dragon. This means that we have, like, infinite access to white mana. And then uh, it is especially, especially good against a deck like Enchantress, where just taxing them for two extra more on each spell that they have. I mean, let me preface this by saying Enchantress is, like, an awful matchup, extremely bad, but Aura of Silence gives you at least a, a little bit of hope, uh, where in, in, in yeah, and in, in what, what is otherwise a pretty much unwinnable matchup. So having access to Aura of Silence has been pretty nice. It also can make things really awkward for, you know, opposing Dreadnought players when their combo costs four instead of two. It's it's kind of a really big deal. So yeah, that's pretty nice. And then when Disenchant is just, you know, raw efficiency. That's the only reason why we have uh, one copy of Disenchant. Otherwise, I would be playing the third copy of Aura. Then we have two Cop Red and one Warmth. Obviously, this is specifically aimed at Burn, although obviously Cop Red has other has other value against decks like Goblins and then uh, random decks that are playing Fling. So Cop Red does a lot of work there. And Warmth is specifically for the red deck. Uh, finally, Planner Birth is an interesting card that I have yet to see in action. Obviously, uh, as, as I said, I don't own the card in paper. Also, not very many Armageddon gamers in my in in my my local game store. So. Uh, Planner Birth is a card that I, it's still very much theory crafting and like imagining some good spots for it, but I have not actually seen in action and do its thing. So uh, that's that. This is the deck when I play in League. If you enjoy the content, make, hit, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you for round number one. Round number one against the one and only Lanny Sand. As much as I would like to keep it, probably not for the best. What do we have here? This one looks a lot more functional, so let's keep this one. I'm gonna bottom the second decree. We have some nice clean. Oh, okay, so we're probably playing against Gat, I would imagine. So we really want to find some sort of discard. I'm gonna lead on basic swamp. So if Lanny plays a meddling mage on turn two, maybe they won't name source of plowshares. Although if I'm playing a basic swamp, he can probably have an idea of what I'm up to. <laughs> basic planes. Okay, so let's play a planes and ship the turn back. So knowing that we're playing against Groatog, it's not great for it. Oh, uh, maybe he's on Shrimp. Seems unlikely, considering it's Lanny, but stranger things have happened. Would love to draw land, let me tell you that much. I would need to cycle this decree on his sand step if I can. Okay, there we go. Actually, I think I'm just gonna drop an angel. He can daze, he can counterspell, he can do a variety of things here. Yeah, he dazes. Obviously, that's worst case scenario, but interesting that he bounds the land instead of just hard casting the daze. So, even having the Exalted Angel in the graveyard is not the worst, actually, because uh, Dragon Land there is great. The nice thing about doing that is this is another card in the graveyard for Skeletal's Crying, so I do like that part quite a bit. Cunning Wish. Well, <laughs> Flash of Insight has been found. Well, maybe he is actually on Dreadnought. We'll see. Yeah, I definitely have no idea what to expect here. Let's cycle, make it 1-1, one, one, dude. Look at our little soldier guy. We'd love to find like a discard spell or something. Okay, swing for one. The good thing is if my opponent is actually playing Shrimp. Oh, if he flashes here, we get to resolve Scrying for two, which would be very nice. So in response to that, I will Scrying for X equals two. He can foil this, but if he does, like, it's not super, super great. He's trading three cards for one. Okay. 
another source of flare. So he, if he's actually playing shrimp, we have a lot of removal happening here. And cunning wish, so weird. Opt. He is countering hard over there. I don't think I'm playing around uh, Armageddon anymore. Ornus is actually kind of nice against their flash of insight. Like it forces him to crack it right now, so he's not gonna have that good of an effect. It is kind of cute. X equals five is a lot though. Would love to have found the dragon. That would have been very nice. I think there's actually there's an argument for cracking this right now. So I don't think he's gonna have another flash of insight. So I may find. I was gonna say I may find a three drop. That's not the three drop that I was hoping for. I was hoping for an angel, but I guess this will do. If I had found an angel right there, that would have been great though. Another scrying would be great. Eight cards in hand. There's a dreadnought. If he stifles, okay, he stifles. So I think I'm going to ship the turn back and I'm going to untap. I guess I can use one source of pleasure so instead. The problem is I don't want him to vision charm. That's the awkward thing. So I think I'm just going to untap here. So let's untap. Swamp is not great, but it's fine. So let's wrath. If he vision charms, I think I plow. That resolved. Nice. Now the wrath resolves, which stops our clock. But even if he has another... I, I really wanted to use one of my expensive removal spells, right? I feel like it was very important for me to like to use my big mana. Probably gonna hold on to that one until I find it rest. He's not finding land drops and he ha he's up to seven cards. So that's kind of nice for me. We are hitting land drops. Eventually we're gonna find a decree. Powder keg resolves. It is mildly annoying, but like it's not annoying enough for me to want to use a vindicate on that, right? I could play the angel as a three, th as a two, two, and then we can flip in response to the keg. So that should be fine. It still warrants a counter spell, but I don't need to play anything just yet. Kind of awkward that we have not found the dragon and that we have not we have also not found enough white sources. Him going to this card is pretty good for me here. Discarnate days. Okay. I think we just continue playing this game. Hard cast gush. Makes sense. It's pretty smart. That's something that people don't do often. Like you have the mana and you know you you would otherwise go down two mana and I think it's uh, you know what Lani did there is very smart I don't see don't see enough people doing that it's got a bunch of days okay that's a big one like this is a lot of pressure from him now so I'm gonna be hitting every single land drop the remainder of this game so let's cast a morph here just because I want to get these cards off my hand because now I'm actually going to start using my mana every turn so now trading with a counter spell of his I think it's fine uh we could like try to counter something uh, to play this but then it's gonna get eaten by the by the powder keg so, so now i want to put a stop on my upkeep because we're gonna start hitting some land drops pretty unfortunate that we have not found a discard spell upkeep tunnel dragon cycle find the planes play the planes pass the turn once again same play good stuff okay we're going for the dreadnought again we're gonna do the same thing that we did last time once again he does go for the stifle okay so this time i guess we're not going to Attempt to get back the dragon. Play a land. And now we have 12 mana. I think I want to lead on the wrath. We'll see what my opponent does here. He just counterspelled. Okay, cool. Then we attempt to vindicate. He counterspells that one too. We attempt to vindicate again. He gushes. Probably going to foil this one. And he has already used three daises. So we're going to source to plowshares right now while he stepped out and we go until the next turn so he pitched two islands there the both that he got with gush so he's down to four cards we have one last answer to a dreadnought and he's down two dreadnoughts there we go so i'm not gonna get back the dragon here because i'm going to probably lead on vindicate and then play an angel we definitely need an answer to this dreadnought though hopefully he did not find the vision charm source of plowshares probably my best draw here Basic planes, not so much. So let's lead on Vindicate. He's got the Vision Charm. Yeah, that's a big problem. So now we don't have an answer to the Dreadnought. We do have an Angel, but it's kind of not enough. And now he untaps, so even if he has Foil, he can actually use it. So we're going to take 12 here, down to 5. Then we're going to go up to 9. And then we can potentially use the Dragon to block. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Removal. No. Unlucky. Swing. Funny enough, he can stifle the life gain trigger here, which is kind of hilarious. Here comes the dragon, which he can foil. And this important sequence because I'm representing the fact that my last card could be Source to Plowshares. So that's why Lani doesn't like straight up just counter this because he's thinking, okay, like 
What if his last card is Source of Blushers? My last card is not Source of Blushers, though. <laughs> so let's go on to game number two. So, uh, bringing Disenchant, bringing Aura of Silence. Uh, I think I want Smother. I think I want Haunting Echoes. And I think that's it. Not a fan of the Furnaces. Man, ne never found a single discard spell in that entire game. That's kind of what the entire... What the entire thing was about. I just never found a discard spell. Do I even want Haunting Echoes? I guess I have to respect the fact that he could have the flash, uh, the freeze. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut the Echoes. I think I'd rather just try to kill him with Exalted Angel Beats. Maybe I'm... I'm gonna cut the disenchant. Like, oh, although I guess he has Powder Keg too, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, let's just... The Aura of Silence is probably just fine. Although I guess... Disenchant is just strictly better Vindicate in this in this scenario. So yeah, let's bring in the Haunting Echoes, and this looks fine. We could cut a Dust Bowl, but I kind of like to hit my land drops. Hey, look at that. A Discord spell. Perfect. Yeah, this hand looks fine. So let's lead on Duress, and man, his hand is pretty heinous. Let's take the Opt. His hand is really bad. Turn 1 Delta. I think I Jirar's Verdict now so that I can scry in for 2 next turn. He discards Delta and Island. Cool. Slide of hand. If I don't find exactly a white source off the top, I think I'm just going to go for Aura of Silence. Interesting that he plays out the Flutter Strand. He doesn't have Portent yet. Uh, but I'm just going to cast this right now, because he can only have drawn a Daze to counter this. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, so we're looking pretty good here. Liking my spot a fair bit. So now we can go for Aura of Silence. Whether this resolves or not, I don't care too much. The opt in response. Mismatching opts. Gross. So Aura of Silence is going to make things fairly awkward for him, I imagine. Portent. Look at that Portent plus Fetchland value. Mmm, mmm. Delicious. What I would love to find here would be Eternal Dragon. Eternal Dragon would be very nice. Another planes and ship the turn back. If he does play out a Powder Cake, I think I disenchant it just to have a card in my graveyard. He gushes. Interest light of hand. I do love that I'm at, tw I'm at 24 here. <laughs> huh. Yeah, I, I, I think I do this just to get cards off of my hand. And I'm not gonna run into days here. I don't think there's any reason for me to do that. So I'm just gonna wait until main phase and scrying for two. Perfect. So play a land and ship the turn back. As is, we already have multiple answers to a Dreadnought, which is pretty cool. And even this turn, we can just start playing the dragon out. And I think I want to do that. I want to put him on some sort of clock because there's always the threat of brain freeze. So I do think that I want to put him on a clock. That's nice. Okay. He didn't counter this dragon. So maybe he won't counter this dragon. And this dragon actually blanks the reality ripple as a, as a way to buy a turn. Five mana. Hardcast gush. Okay. Looking for this. That resolved. Okay, so now we have a two-turn clock. He's under significant amounts of pressure. And gushing on my end step there makes... If, if he is going for the brain free skill, it makes things a lot harder for him to, to put together. At this point, I'm not worried about a Dreadnought whatsoever. I just don't think that's a realistic way for him to, to kill me. Yeah, he just packs it in. Cool. Yeah, Dragon's just coming in clutch. Game number three. Any changes we may want? I don't think so. Turn 1 Duress into turn 2 Verdict did a pretty good job there. And also drawing multiple scrines was very nice too. I think I'm just going to submit the same. Maybe I should consider counting the Dust Bowl for any sort of actual business spell, but I don't think I want to do that. Maybe I do need to respect Winter Orb as a potential card that he could be playing, which makes Vindicate a little bit more enticing. Perfect mana. Nothing to do with it. Uh, this one's much better. Keep this bottom decree, I think. Maybe it should be bottom in Vindicate. I would love to draw the rest. No. Play a Swamp and ship. Does nothing, huh? That's a good one. So let's ship the turn back here. And I think... Well, we're definitely going to be cycling Eternal Dragon on end step. Slide of hand. He does not go for it. Wonder if he is brave enough to stifle this. Looks like he isn't. Coward. Aura of Silence is nice. Let's pass the turn. I don't want him to be able to counterspell something there and to use his mana efficiently. There's a Dreadnought. If he Vision Charms, I'm going to Source of Blushers. Yeah. So this forces the action, yeah. So now he counterspells. This means that now I get to untap Duress and then Aura of Silence. Alternatively, I can just decimate his hand and just take a hit. He gushes in response. Let's see what he's got. Foil, Counterspell, <laughs> Misdirection. Wow. All of these are super interesting. Misdirection can actually get me 
with the Girard's Verdict. If I take the foil, I can guarantee that this Dreadnought dies, which is very enticing. So yeah, let's just take the foil and just resolve this. And now I just do this on his upkeep when I know it's good. Place out a land, ships the turn back. Okay, that's cool. So let's... Do I just play an Angel here? I mean, I really want to find a land here. So the reason to play an Angel is basically to just bait out the Counterspell. Because I have some other spells that I want to resolve. So that's just, unfortunately, it's it's just a bait spell that I need to throw into the garbage. Hold some to the land. Very interesting. Well, I know, as soon as I find the land, then we can start to bring back Eternal Dragon. And then we can start pulling ahead. Okay, so now is when things get interesting. I have a bunch of removal. I'm not super scared of a Dreadnought. And I can start pulling ahead. So we get crazy punished by Winter Orb. But otherwise, we're looking pretty good here, I think. Cunning Wish for Flash of Insight. Value. Ooh, he goes for Dreadnought. Okay. Reality Ripple. So, this is actually super interesting because there's some, there's some cool things that we can do. Because if I Gerard's Verdict, that is still a two for one. Right? If he if he misdirects, I still take both the misdirection and any card he has, and then I can just pitch two of these lands, or probably like Vindicate plus Verdict, and then I still have I still have a counter spell. I, I still have uh, like two answers to his thing. So I do think that I want to use this as a way to bait out the misdirection. I could cycle the Eternal Dragon to gain three more life, but I think that having access to the mana so that I can cast both this enchant and the other thing is more valuable. He can also just discard Flash of Insight and in the misdirection itself. Discard Flash of Insight for value, that's pretty nice. Okay, so let's play around days. I imagine he's going to Flash of Insight here on end step, and then we can smother this. This probably means that he's going to be able to find a way to, um, to protect this Dreadnought, which is kind of annoying. Or worst case scenario, gosh. He does have this dead misdirection in his hand. I'm not a fan of this card at all. <laughs> I don't think it's good. I'm assuming this is going to find a Gush, which is far and away the best thing he can find, of course. But I'm still gonna smother on his upkeep. He resolves Flash, untap, smother your thing. Gush in response, which makes a lot of sense. He effectively just tutored for it. Hardcast foil, disenchant, and that resolved. Perfect. So I'm actually not sure if I can do this, but we'll find out together. So I think I can cycle Dragon and then activate the ability on my upkeep. Is that true? Hell yeah. Woo! Oh my god, that's so hot. I, I So far I have never done that. So good thing that I, <laughs> that I thought of it. Perfect. How sexy is that? Very. Let me answer that question for you. Very. Up on my end step. Still has this silly misdirection. Although I guess misdirection does uh, counter vindicate. Counter. Right. At the cost of two cards, of course. Untap. Do we want to do the same thing we just did? No, I don't think so. Land. All right. So I think I want to cycle decree on his end step. He can stifle the decree, but that's one less enabler for his dreadnought. Maybe he has a powder keg or something. That would not be great, but I do have a land drop rolled up, so... Ooh, nice. So let's just start casting some dragons, I guess. Foil. Sounds good to me. Swing for six. So we're one mana short of activating the dragon ability and then casting the dragon in the same turn, which is a little bit unfortunate. Ooh, powder keg coming in clutch. Pops it right away. Yeah, I'm just gonna cycle. Get a planes, and then I'm gonna get both dragons back on my upkeep. Good value. Play the planes, ship the turn. Would love to find some more discard spells. Oh, there's a Dreadnought, finally. Vision Charm. Okay, so we need to find an answer really quickly. We know that he's got Misdirection, so we really need to find some sort of instant speed answer here. That one is kind of nice, so let's cast the dragon. And I guess we're gonna cast this now. He may have the counter for this, which would suck. Looks like he doesn't. And if this or of Silence resolves, I think we're going to win. <laughs> he taps the mana to, rep to represent the stifle. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah, at this point, I think that we're, we're good to go here. He's down to two cards, one of which I know is dead. All right, it was, was a little bit of a roller coaster, but we got there. PDGA game, uh, match number two, sorry. And <laughs> this is, <laughs> oh my God. This is the ultimate punishment. That's hilarious though. Uh, 
Okay, I guess I'm gonna keep this one. I'm gonna bottom the wrath. I am really hoping that whatever deck we're playing against, Source of Pleasures is good against, because if that's not the case, oh yeah. <laughs> we are already even mulliganing. We love to see it. We love to see it. Pew! That's gone. So now they're gonna go up to four cards. Well, my opponent also mulliganed, by the way. So they're gonna go up to four cards, and now we can GR's Verdict them. This is very cool. Very, very cool. Love to see it. Opponent discards a land and an angel. Yeah, we're looking pretty good. Yeah, regular Dead Gael is probably a walk in the park for us. If I had to guess, I would think that we are extremely advantaged. I think I actually do not want to just morph this angel. My opponent may have, you know, smother that kind of cards in their hand, and there's no reason for me to, to enable them. Like, I already can hang here for a while. Any land that I find means that I can start getting back Eternal Dragon. We still have multiple source of pleasures in, in hand. Okay, so I don't think that my opponent is going to have any value. So I've, I'm probably just going to cycle this furnace. We found the land. Arena. Okay, that's pretty good. So let's exile the Angel Swamp. And let's see if we find a Vindicate. No Vindicate. I do think now I am going to play this Morphed Angel because that now gives me the option like if my opponent answers the angel that means they're not developing their game plan and if they the mana to kill the angel vindicate yeah that's fine that would have worked regardless of what i used so this that's fine so now we're gonna get back the dragon and eventually we're gonna find the skeletal scrying right okay so let's do rest here see what my opponent is cooking with yeah i'm definitely taking the arena so their hand is double vindicate which is a little bit annoying, but at the same time, it's kind of fine. And Tuko Shade is pretty good for me. We are one minute short of doing the cycling trick, so... Oh, cool. So, Jar's Verdict, you. Let's see what they pitch. Source of Plowshares and Vindicate. So they still have a Vindicate in hand. Interesting that they're seeing this Eternal Dragon and they still chose to, to ship the... The, uh, the, vind the plow instead of the Vindicate. Arena is drawing them a lot of cards, though. Sure. Wasteland. Yeah, that's fine. It's unfortunate that they found the rest before I found something else. It is what it is. No reason for me to take the damage. Opponent gets to gain some life. We know about the one of Vindicate, so I think it's better for me to... Because we could draw exactly the rest, so it's better for me to keep the Swamp here. Land allows me to do this. My best draw is probably Skeletal Trying or a Vindicate to stop this engine. It's cool here because like if they Vindicate my land, they don't. Okay, so I think I just hard cast this dragon. Or I can just... Let's actually just cycle and let's continue drawing cards here. I think I have time, so let's just keep this engine rolling. That's not a good draw. We're gonna take a little bit of a, a poke. Not even sure if I would call this a hit. It's more, more like a poke. Them drawing Verdict would be a little bit annoying. Hypnotic Spectre, okay. I already have a land here, so I'm not gonna cy cycle the dragon this time around. We take three. I would love to find a removal spell. Okay, that's nice. So the rest of Vindicate away. Play a land, cast a dragon. And now they have a dead Gerard's Verdict in hand, which is pretty nice. We want to dodge my opponent drawing a Source of Plowshares. They attack. So we can block here. We can block and then get back the dragon. And then cycle. Yeah, I think that's fine. So this also takes up my opponent's entire turn. They can't actually save it. So now upkeep, we get it back. Let's see what we draw. A land. That kind of sucks. <laughs> That's probably like the worst possible draw there. Literal worst possible draw. I'm gonna take a hit from the hippie, which is not particularly threatening. Sure. Okay. They cast the verdict, which seems bad when they can use it a little bit later. <clears throat> that seems good for me. Obviously, I'm not gonna cycle. That would give my opponent three life, right? Now this hippie is just a three mana 2-2. Two -two, just a glorified bear. On top. Let's see what we find. Do rest. Let's do rest. So my opponent is cooking with over there. Another verdict. Okay. Find the planes. Play the planes. Now we do have a healthy amount of mana. If at any point we find skeletons crying, the game is going to end. We could also find Decree of Justice. We could also find Exalted Angel. We could also find etc etc. So there are plenty, plenty of good stuff to find here. So I could cycle looking for a planes right now to prevent myself from drawing the last planes, but even if I draw the last planes, which would be a pretty bad draw, we still get to hard cast this dragon, so it seems fine enough to me. 
Uh, I guess I'm gonna play around removal. I, around discard, my bad. So Wrath stops my opponent's clock. Now we get to cycle to get our last basic planes. Play it out, and now starting this turn, we're gonna be able to get back Dragon and then cast it the same turn. My opponent has drawn at least five or six cards off of this arena, and I still feel like we're ahead. One, two, three, four, five. So now we get the Dragon back. And my opponent's going to be facing a flying 5-5 five five every turn for the remainder of this game. I guess they can find swords to plowshares, which would be pretty annoying. They already used, they were only seen one sword so far. But I still think that I'm supposed to just play out this dragon because, oh, they found it. Okay, that's annoying. So now we don't have an engine anymore. Like, I really need to find another dragon or scale what's crying. Dark Ritual, hell yeah. I don't think my opponent should, I mean, I have my own verdicts, right? Like, I don't think my opponent should be throwing away their garbage cards. I'm probably going to blow up this arena, though. I need to not fall too far behind here. I mean, if... I've been drawing extremely bad. <laughs> if I don't draw some good cards here, this is going to... I'm actually going to fall behind. So I, I really need to find something here. They found an angel, yeah? Makes sense. Can we find an answer to the angel? My own dragon would be great. Okay, at this point, I do think that I need to blow up the angel because the angel is just going to kill me. It's also going to... They plow their own angel? Yeah, that's just a waste. Like, they're still like 14 turns away, right? It's so much... Like, if I find a dragon now, that would have been a great answer to my dragon. And I only need to worry about exactly one last source of plowshares, and I know that my dragon is good otherwise. That's not it. Skeletal Scrying would be pretty decent right here. <laughs> Opponent, <laughs> they, the opponent is only allowed to cast arenas off of Dark Rituals. Hey, look at that. So this is, we can, I think I just hard cast this for X equals five. I, I don't think there's any main deck way that my opponent can punish me for this. All right, I mean, it was bound to happen. <laughs> we had a lot of good cards to draw there. All right, so we're playing against regular Dead Guy Ill. So I want Dust Bowl. I don't think Furnace does anything, so I'm going to cut these. I think Infest is actually kind of reasonable. It kills Heapy, it kills the other guy, the Nantuko, whatever. Smother is fine. Wrath also probably fine. Maybe I don't care about Duress. I think I do like Aura of Silence, but not Disenchant. Yeah, that's fine. So we can bring in the Aura. Yeah, this looks fine. I do What I do like about Aura as opposed to Disenchant is I can play it proactively. So I can just play it and just keep it in play, making my opponent's arena more expensive. Arena's more expensive. And everybody, everything else is just fine. What do we have here? This hand is fine, but I'm definitely missing some stuff here, especially lands. So this, on the other hand, I will keep. Let's bottom a case of Koilos and send it back. One and the Resses. Makes sense. Pretty good start for them. Though, funnily enough, turn one Heapy would have actually been decent against this hand. Aura of Silence. Playing into Wasteland pretty nicely here. Play a Swamp, send it back. And it's nice here that my opponent will probably, if they have an Arena, they're probably going to go for it. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah, you gotta love it. Let's just play a Swamp. Like, I don't need to enable this nonsense. Girard's Verdict. I think I'm pitching the Aura... And the land. It's possible I get punished by that, but perfect mana. Okay, so I'm probably just cycling the Creeper one if my opponent wastelands me. So cycle, make a dude, and draw a card. It's a fine draw. That's a fine draw. Also, the random one one allows me to play around Diabolic Edict and such. So I could blow this up. I think I'd rather play my own Angel, and then we have the mana to flip next turn. So I'm giving my opponent exactly a one turn window to flip my own Angel. And this is great because if they find the planes and they flip their own angel, okay, so they kill mine, that's fine. Now I can just kill theirs. So we are back to parity. Okay, so Gerard's verdict, you. Vindicate Nantuko Shade. Yeah, of course my opponent has a bunch of uncastable cards in hand. Huh, interesting that they use the plow instead of the Vindicate on my angel. I wonder why. Like, it would have used their mana more efficiently. Haha, <laughs> Burning Tomo's Crypt. And that's the power of Eternal Dragon. Forces my opponent to, like, have garbage cards. Source to Plowshares, my token, is... I think it's a mistake. Um, this is really interesting. I don't think I do anything here. I think I just pass a turn. If my opponent... I mean, this allows my opponent to play out an Exalted Angel, but if they do, then I can just blow up the land, which is gonna put my opponent further away from actually casting it. However, if they do find... Girard's Verdict, me. Yeah, I think my opponent is just getting a little bit too 
caught up on maybe I don't know if they're frustrated or something but just holding cards in their hand against the GR's verdict deck is very valuable tainted field it's actually something I'm interested in blowing up awkwardly cannot do that in the face of the wasteland though unless I just accept the fact that I'm gonna get two for one here I'll just pass the turn source of vouchers yeah I think I'm just going to blow up the tainted field so dust bowl I guess I can just sacrifice the caves, and as long as I never point the dust ball at the wasteland, we're good. They do the work for me. So now we do have double white available, which is nice. We'd we'll love to find a dragon, <laughs> another source of blasters, okay. So now, like, the Gerard's Verdict, my opponent threw away, definitely coming back to bite them. Vindicate. Yeah, I would like that white source, please. If they had, like, two white, two black, I would save the Vindicate for a potential arena, but... The fact that I get to just color screw them off white is just too much value to pass up. And there, like, I'm just using my source of blushers as early as I can. Like, I'm going to have to be killing that anyway at some point. So I want to make sure that I get the cards out of my hand. And maybe in this coming turn, I wanted to use my mana some other way. So they play another basic swarm. And this Vindicate, I'm probably going to hold on to. Opponent two cards in hand. We are also at two. That's pretty good. So... I could just vindicate the Tormod script and then just start doing Eternal Dragon things. It's kind of a waste, but it's probably worth it considering the current state of the situation. My opponent there like failed to crack the crypt in response, which would have been a good play, but I don't think it's going to matter too much anyway. Unless I find Skeletal Scrying Arena. Okay, now we are a little bit on even footing Eternal Dragon. Okay, so let's cycle here, go to planes, and send the turn back. One has got a lot of life to work with. Not a lot of white mana to work with, though. I guess not something I care about here. So I think I'm just going to play out the dragon in my hand. That's fine, though. I do like that the morph also like gets it not only gets blanked by the dragon, but also like I have it checked with source of plowshare. So yeah, my opponent just packs it in. Yeah, I think my opponent was just like, a victim of the like the, the eternal <laughs> the eternal dead guy ale problem, right? Like they had a hand with like. They discarded and took a shade and like multiple stuff like that, but then they had like multiple wastelands in, in play. So if this had been color producing lands, I feel like the start of that game would have been a little bit different. But uh, yeah, there we go. Two and a round number three. We got a furnace. We've got good mana. We got a keeper. Ton of dragons also so sick. Definitely would love to have a duress alongside this hand. Maybe one removal spell, but this looks like a fine opener. One and most of six. Let's see what we're up against. Basic swamp. Please be a duress. Oh, baby. I actually don't know what I'm up against here. So I don't think I'm going to cycle this Furnace just yet. Because this may be a matchup where Furnace doesn't do anything. And in that case, I would like to have access to this Duress in my opponent's bin. So that I can uh, that I can cycle this. We'll see soon enough what I'm up against. For example, if we are playing a Mirror or something like that. And my opponent has um, a Gerard's Verdict. Then I may cycle the Furnace to see if I can find something else. Second Basic Swamp into blackmail damn that's a card i guess so i think i'm just gonna cycle for a land here and then i'm just gonna reveal or three lands to my opponent so this has to be pit rack i'm assuming dark red and snare bridge resolved do i want to vindicate a land here i kind of do not gonna lie i think i'm just gonna play this uh, actually Let's play around the rest. I'm gonna vindicate the Insurum Bridge. I think that it's actually it's actually valuable to like do this before this Vindicate gets gets taken by a silly like some sort of discard spell or whatever. Yeah, bottomless pit. There you go. So here I'm low key hoping that this Exalted Angel gets taken because I really want to hit my land drops. Also, this means my opponent will have no hand, which is probably good for me. Actually, yeah, let, let's not take the Exalted Angel here. So let's, yeah, I'm actually going to try to, I'm going to cycle this Furnace to make it less likely that my opponent takes the Angel. Like, I, I can get punished by doing this if my opponent has a removal spell. And if this works, we just straight up win the game. Like, it, it's it's possible that my opponent's very last card is a Smother or something like that. No, it was an Innocent Blood. Ha! <laughs> Sorcery Speed Removal. Oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's the price you pay, I guess. Let's flip this angel real quick. And let's get this party started. So this is going to be a race. And I think I'm winning it pretty comfortably. Opponent gets in there. Four. Actually, do I want to get back the dragon? So by getting back the dragon, 
there's a 50 50 chance that i get to discard the dragon meaning i get to play out this land yeah let's do that actually because the other option is to do this afterwards but you know i can't cycle the dragon anyway so okay Ooh, that's a big one i'm gonna get to scrying for four on my upkeep so i think i'm gonna be pretty comfortable after that so my opponent has one turn to find a duress i mean i'm still pretty comfortable in this spot as is right like with a with an active exalted angel and being at 21 life 17 i guess so i'm pretty comfortable here so let's get a little scrying four four one two three four pitching the eternal dragon that's fine swing for four here go some triggers one is gonna die to their plague spitter and upkeep if they don't find an answer that is so brutal for my opponent the fact that they <laughs> they were caught by the own bottomless pit with a sorcery speed answer to my angel brutal for them okay so i want dust bowl i think i want smother i think i want disenchant same thing with auras i do not want wrath my body could be playing uh hippie like their ritual hypnotic specter but i don't think i care enough about that so i'm just gonna keep it at that and i'm just going to cut actually verdict is potentially interesting by having me discard my own cards i do like furnace being a, a permanent that i can deploy and then it can be instant speed card so like i'm kind of holding that in the bank kind of deal um the question is i think I'm, gonna, I'm cutting some number of duresses slash gerard's verdict i think it's a matter of which one let i think i'm gonna cut two verdicts one the rest maybe wrong about that but i think that's that's the split that sounds better to me this hand seems fine we are heavily incentivized to keep kind of any seven against pit rack anyway this is a card that we can go turn one the rest turn two double furnace we have good mana lots of things to like here turn one the rack that rack trigger is going to be kind of annoying <laughs> so let's do rest now dystopia we literally could not care less about and blackmail is the card that we're gonna take so now they play a swamp and they're gonna swing for two next turn we get to play that double furnace once again i'm not gonna be activating this furnace for the reasons that i explained earlier it's a good draw pretty good draw it's gonna play out the furnaces ship the turn back play a swamp and they activate the factory okay i mean as if my opponent is going to continue playing the attack for two game that's a game i can I can play. I'm into that. Duress. So I could duress the Dystopia, but I think that just having a random card in my hand is more valuable, actually. So let's play the Swamp. Ship the turn back. I think I'm probably going to cycle one of these furnaces. Okay, there goes the factory. So let's cycle Dragon first, and then I'm going to Furnace targeting the Blackmail Reflecting Pool. Uh, okay, that one's probably a little bit too too much to pass up. So I think I'm just going to duress now. And I'm just going to take my opponent's entire hand here. Oof. Okay, let's take the bottomless pit. And do we even care about verdicting here? I don't think I do. I think it just pass. <laughs> now that I know that I know that my opponent's hand is is terrible, it's a little bit awkward that even blocking the factory doesn't really do anything for me. Uh, that's kind of annoying actually in the face of the decree. Let's cycle. And we find Scrying. Pretty good for us. Pretty good for us. Play a Planes and say go. I am going to trade with the Factory if I'm given the option. It means I'm going to take two from this, but probably worth doing anyway. So let's make some dudes. We do get blown out by a Vendetta, which is slightly awkward, but we get rid of a land. Second rack. Yeah, we're not going to be triggering that for a while. Interesting. Kind of want to destroy the curse scroll here although megrim megrim does stop my eternal dragon engine yeah let's gerard's verdict get rid of the dystopias this gives me like one more turn to make the decision whether i want to vindicate or not and i can still scrying for three right now it's pretty good so i think this is fine but since the curse scroll is not really doing anything right now and neither is the megrim i just don't feel the need to to do that so we're just crying for three, silencing some cards, draw three. I think I want to get back the dragon here. Just get back the dragon, play a land, ship the turn, chain of smog. Okay, actually kind of brutal here. So let's discard duress and smother. Maybe I need to respect this Migrim. This feels like the way that I lose this game. Wait, why are these in the temporary zone and not discarded? <laughs> these two cards should be in my graveyard, but they're, they're not. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay, so let's vindicate the Migrim. 
Megrim, Megrim, I don't know how you pronounce that, but... And do I want to vindicate this scroll? I think so. Uh, actually, mm, let's, let's wait on that for a minute. No, actually I do. So now we have that covered. We have three cards against the rack. Funeral, Charm, Discard, Source to Plowshares, and Tap. We're going to take one here. Two, I guess. One times two. It's a pretty good draw. So I am think I'm just going to... Uh, actually... Yeah, I have to cycle this because I don't think I can go below three cards. This is a way to like put a threat without actually going down on cards. So now I have a clock, but I'm not going down to one, which seems a little bit scary. Especially because any discard spell would have killed me there, right? Yeah, maybe I should have killed the Migrim that one turn. That does alleviate the, the pressure a fair amount. So let's just blow up that. Still holding on to a land. Let's get in with the little guys. This is still a... Uh, Four turn clock bridge. Eventually we'll find an answer to that, so I'm not too worried. In the meantime, we're just going to continue just continue drawing cards. Yeah, I think we just pass. So it's bad if my opponent finds a bottomless pit, but any anything short of that specifically should be fine for us. So they can't attack here because they play their land pre-combat. Innocent blood. Discard one of my soldiers. So now I think I'll start drawing cards. I just need to make sure that I don't care about the card bottomless pit at all. And this feels like a way to achieve that. Play the planes, send it back. We're at three, but I feel like not terrible shape. Chain of smog. So I'll just cycle, discard a planes and a swamp. And I do not wish to copy that spell. Ha! Huh. This time around, uh, the cards did not just get stuck in the temporary zone. That's funny. So Eternal Dragon. There we go. So now there's an aura of silence. So I'm just going to sit on this. There's no reason for me to do anything here. My hope is that I don't need to destroy this rack. Blackmail. Choose your poison. If I were my opponent, I think I would discard the Jura's Verdict. It's the most valuable of the three because it can potentially draw me enough cards to get out of it. So yeah, here we, we're we just cooking here. I, I have no rush to get rid of this. We can just continue hitting land drops, just hanging out. And the second that my opponent plays anything threatening, there goes the Source of Plowshares. And now I think we just cycle both dragons and then just draw both of them. On my upkeep. Man, this feels this feels good. <laughs> I mean, th this is where I feel like this deck really excels. Is when if your opponent is trying to grind, this this deck is is good at that. Like that's that's what we're trying to do. Eternal Dragon is a card that can definitely grind. So my plan here is to just get to a point where I can I play out the dragon, and uh, I think I'm actually gonna cycle on my upkeep to make sure I don't draw the last planes in my deck now we untap oh another dragon dragons everywhere should be turned back worst case scenario if if we really need to like get out of you know get in a problem and we're taking rack damage we can just plow my own dragon and that's fine second rack it's never gonna trigger <laughs> three three mana rack untap get back the dragon and cast the dragon and i don't think there's any value in putting my opponent to one so i'm just gonna wait until I can kill them in a single attack. All right, got there. Good, good, good matchups. Here we go for the next round. This hand is kind of close, honestly. I feel like, am I keeping this hand? We have 25 lands we're drawing towards, plus four dragons. That's 29. We don't have black. Yeah, I think I'm just going to move this. <laughs> um, probably have to keep this. At least this is a two color land, so a little bit closer like i'm a little bit closer to casting both the swords and the verdict basic island for my opponent okay dust balls not where we want to be but hopefully we'll find the dragon now shivan reap could be a lot of things could be devour could be blue red shrimp and fire ice my land that's so rude okay basic planes is nice so now we do have this verdict ready to go we're probably gonna cast that this coming turn forsaken cd that's probably pretty bad for us most likely means stasis <laughs> another verdict not great huh interesting stasis splashing red so we're gonna be probably very mindful of this like i really want to find the land so that we can start holding up dust bowl when my opponent sends that but playing non-islands in stasis seems really risky black vice you just land the stasis in the face of a dust bowl that's very brave Okay, I mean, we're going to start taking some damage here, that's for sure. Yeah, that's a swamp. So now we really want to find, I guess, any land, and then we can blow up the Forsaken City. <laughs> they found another one, okay. Source to Plowshares, not great. I think we may lose this one. I guess we can find Vindicate Pyroclasm. 
Okay, there's the Vindicate. I think I probably want to wait one more turn so that I can play through a daze. It sucks because I'm gonna give my opponent a full untap, which really sucks, but it is what it is. At least they don't have gosh mana. That's not a land, but I really don't think I can afford to play into days. Yeah, I mean the, the Shivan Reef splash is, is definitely a cost because you don't have fetch lands to, to play around all that stuff, right? So so I don't think my opponent has Counterspell because they could have been holding up Counterspell, but they haven't. So I'm going to assume that they don't have the Counterspell in hand. Well, at this point, it's pretty unlikely they don't, but after gushing and everything. Mm. Second Vice means I take six now, so I'm just dead. Okay, yeah, that definitely... My, my opponent's hand definitely got me. It caught me with my pants down there. Also, we had like a bunch of Source of Plushers. We didn't really do anything. Aura of Silence coming in, keep everything else. I guess I want Haunting Echoes. I definitely want the extra Dust Bowl. Wrath of God is heinous. So I guess we do have some dead cards here. I think I'm going to bring in Tormo Script just because it's a Zero CMC card. But all of my other cards are just straight up dead. So yeah, let's go with this. This is the opposite kind of... Man, I just cannot catch a break with this Zero Landers. Um, this is exactly the matchup that we do not want to see. This is the opposite of all the first three matches that we play i like this we're gonna bottom i guess the second dragon their planes ship the turn back if i can i'm going to send back this dust bowl so let's ship the turn back we're just gonna cycle dragon and end step there is some value in holding on to the the dust bowl just to hide the information oh that's cool okay so let's do rest probably gonna get countered but Arcane Denial seems okay with me. So we're gonna up a card here. I'm definitely drawing the cards in the current situation. Find a Disenchant, that's nice. Black Vice, that's okay. So we're gonna Disenchant on end step because like that's actually gonna deal a pretty healthy amount of damage. If my opponent wants to daze this, that's kind of fine. Oh, they just counter spell. So now we're gonna get to Resolve Duress, which is nice. So Duress you, they just have nothing, huh? That makes sense. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm gonna Vindicate here. That stops my opponent's clock. Obviously, they can just, you know, top deck like, stasis, and that's terrible for us, but, like, that's not really getting better for me anyway. Oh, come on! <laughs> I can't believe that, man. That's insane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess I got punished. But there's, there's exactly four cards that punish me in that situation, so... I feel like it's fine for me to go for that right there. Considering the information that I have. <laughs> That's so brutal, though. All right. Chip the turn back. I guess even casting Girard's Verdict would have been there better than, than playing the Vindicate. What are you going to do? Ah, oh, they found the vice. Man, my opponent. Have been, <laughs> they have been drawing better than I have. Let's, let's just put it like that. I mean, we do have some stuff that we can do here. If we find, like, white source into blue source, we can actually... Uh, black source into wh white source, I mean. We can verdict and take the... Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, okay. Th this game was not ours to win. <laughs> Let's just put it like that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, at this point, I don't think there's any combination of cards I can draw anymore that I can win. Um, it was a combination of my opponent finding stasis on a one-turn window and then finding a black vice a couple of turns later, meaning that they get to put me on a very real clock. And then on top of that, they just found a gush so they can recoup their cards in hand. So at this point, I cannot raise the Forsaken City. I cannot raise the Black Vice either. So at this point, I don't think... Even if I stacked my deck and I drew like a land every single turn, I still don't think I can win. Let, let's imagine some dream scenarios here, I guess. Uh, that's not it. So dream scenario would be I find a white source and then immediately after I find a black source so I get to vindicate my opponent's stasis and they don't have counter magic. And they're they're pitching counter spell, so I'm going to assume that we're locked out now. The Caves of Coilus. Oh, they chain of vapor their own stasis. So that's a reset on their mana. I mean, might as well play it out. See if I can get their furnace. Yeah, that doesn't do it. All right. Yeah, so this one, uh, the, the Stasis matchup is actually pretty bad, but uh, I mean, maybe I, I was not supposed to Vindicate the Black Vice in that scenario. Like, I, I mean, I would have died to the Black Vice anyway, but if I hadn't, then I would have been able to untap and, and destroy this, the top deck Stasis. Although I think my opponent would have not played it out, and we, in which way we would have been able to like use Jura's Verdict to potentially pull ahead. So maybe it was wrong of me to Vindicate, but we were going to be taking some damage from the Black Vice, so... 
I don't know. I think it's close. I think it's close. <sighs> yeah, I, I'm not as in, enough well-versed in the stasis matchup to, to know about that. But we'll figure it out. All right, on to the next round against one of my favorite legacy content creators, Romario. And this hand looks pretty decent. Dragon, Scrying. What else could anybody want? Crystal Bean. Okay. So maybe this is balancing things. If that's the case, probably not great for me. I definitely need to find some discard spells here. This is the can Oh, this is not bad. This is um, Devourer. Okay, so that's a lot less bad for me. Devourer I can potentially... Question now is... Source of Blush is not going to do much. Um, I think I play out the Exalted Angel. This is because my opponent is like two combo pieces away from winning. So it's probably valuable for me to put a threat so I can start clocking. Ancient Tomb, that's the altar. Okay, so this turn we're going to spend blowing up this. Oh, we just die. Yeah, we just die. I do get to see his list at least. Oh, his main is Sabo's web. Okay, so he's playing he's playing Tom's list, I assume. There's some defense grids, some mind stones. Alright, cool stuff. Yeah, we we're we're dead here. We're just gonna get decked. So definitely one dust bowl, one haunting echoes, engineered plague is Pretty good at stopping the combo, so it's Aura of Silence. Wrath of God doesn't do anything. Disenchant is good. Cop Red is kind of interesting. Probably better than Source of Plowshares. The thing about Cop Red is that it stops the fling angle. So yeah, I'm gonna cut the furnaces, bring in a Cop Red. But I don't think I want the second Cop Red. Yeah, I think this is fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I keep this. This hand has a couple of things going on that I like. First of all, I do think Verdict is pretty nice. And also, I think Dust Bolt is very good. So, would definitely love a Duress to go with this stuff. But the the combo deck actually requires... I mean, it, it doesn't require that many pieces, but those pieces are kind of expensive. So, it also requires a lot of mana. Most of it. I'm probably casting this Verdict on two. Because so many of his pieces are relevant, as I was saying. Would love to see a Duress, though. Not quite. Vindicate would be nice. So, I can go Vindicate your land on two and then blow up your other land on turn three. It also puts another card in the graveyard for Skeletal Scrying, which is nice. Mindstone. That's not great. That is not great. I think I have the Scrying for one. As awful as that feels. So I may find the rest. Ugh, there's the Vindicate that I wanted. <laughs> so we may just lose this turn once again, if he has exactly the combination that he just had. Two mana to filter for blue, play another Sphere, and then filter Sphere again. All right, it's not bad. Let's do rest and see what's up. Fling, nice. He has City of Traders, Crystal Vein. So he has a bunch of mana. I still think I Vindicate a land though, because I'm going to be doing that every turn because of the Dust Bowl. If I didn't have the Dust Bowl already in hand, I would not be Vindicating there. But the fact that we do means that I can just use that to actually gain an advantage here. So there goes the City. Now he's down to zero cards, and he has no combo pieces. So zero cards, no combo pieces. I think I want to Dust Bowl the Crystal Vein, then Dust Bowl the Reef, Sky Diamond, Decree. So I can drop four here. My opponent has one, two, three, four, five, six mana. I think I'm going to spend this turn to draw four and recoup, and then I can start Dust Bowling again next turn. Alternatively, I can try to put on a clock, but I think that drawing cards matters more. Actually, yeah, no, that's fine. Oh, Defense Grid, that's right. Never mind, so I guess we're cycling. <laughs> totally forgot that Defense Grid has text against Skeletal Scrying. My bad. Vindicate. Opponent's got one card in hand. This is actually a very interesting spot. Don't think I Vindicate. I guess I can Duress plus Scrying, or I can Scrying for five. He didn't have a land last turn, but it's possible he does have one. Yeah, I'm just gonna Duress. Let's Duress plus Scrying. Okay, Fling is good, and now I'm going to Scrying for four. We draw four and ship the turn back. Imagine he's gonna, yeah, cycles Mindstone now. This means he's got less mana. So that means that it's less likely for him to combo me out in a single turn now. So we have that going on at least. Another Dust Bowl is nice. So let's go Dust Bowl your Shivan Reef. And then we're gonna Vindicate Sky Diamond. Swing for two. Next turn, we do get to blow up the City of Traitors, Altar of Dementia, but he doesn't have blue mana. So at least we have that going on. Duress is nice. Okay, City of Rest and Devourer. So this is six total mana. Let's Dust Bowl and then play a Cop Red. I think we should be good now. After he plays the City, I'm gonna blow it up. Yeah, that's that's actually a pretty fine draw. 
So Dust Bowl land now. We do get to cycle an end step. These are, these are the little soldiers that could. <laughs> Slowly but surely, chugging along. Yeah, we're gonna blow up that one up too. Just playing Mono Vindicates. I'm not gonna bring back that dragon. Hey, another dragon. There goes that. Continuing to attack. You'd think that we'd run out of lands, but nah. <laughs> not gonna happen. This, I, I find out that this is how uh, this kind of matchup tends to go. Like, it's just a long game where you end up just constricting your point of mana. And here we're just gonna drop a lethal threat. So this is something that just kills him immediately. And he cannot win from here. Even if he has soul land, he does not have... This only taps for white or black, so he does not, not have blue for Tinker, so I'm not worried about that. Game number three. I don't think we want any of the other cards. I think this is fine. Would like to see some duresses. No such luck. I think I ship this hand. We have no interaction at all. We don't even have black mana for this verdict. I think I'm gonna ship it. This is better because we have access to Engineered Plague. So I'm gonna keep this and I'm gonna bottom up planes. I think that we need to find a black source anyway. And if we find a black source, I can cast every card in my hand. So not a black source. Good card, not a black source. Really need to find a black source quickly. We're not gonna have that much time. The good thing is once I do, then we can drop Plague and we cannot really get comboed out. All right, cool. That's big. That's really big. Hmm. Do I prioritize targeted discard or do I prioritize being mana efficient? And I think I prioritize targeted discard. Okay, so we're gonna take the Tinker and send it back. Savo's web kind of a banger here. Delaware Stone and Mind Stone. Value. We do get to take all of the cards from their hand now, which is nice. So at least we got that going on. So this Jurar's Verdict is gonna be pretty sexy. Shivan Reef and Tinker. Gain three life for our troubles. We love to see it. This coming turn, I'm gonna play Plague on Phyrexian because I don't want my opponent to be able to randomly play a to like cantrip a couple of times and then randomly put a thing into play. I think it's Phyrexian. Yeah, it's a Phyrexian construct. So it was a Rata. That's why I was not 100 sure. So this means that my opponent is gonna need Rushing River before they're able to combo, which is pretty good for us. So I think this next turn I'm gonna play the Exalted Angel just so I have a clock. Yeah, so he cycles in Mind Stone, which makes sense. Plays Fear. I imagine he's gonna ship the turn back here. Ooh, he just packs it in. I guess he didn't have any answer to Engineer to play. All right, got there. Uh, four and one so far. Time for the last match. Interesting. I do like that we have access to some... I, I would be a little bit more comfortable if there were a basic Swamp in here, but I still think that I'm going to keep here Seal of Fire. Going to assume Burn here, I guess which is terrible matchup for us. I, I expect to lose game one, almost regardless. Curse Scroll. Okay, now I'm a little bit of an awkward draw over there. Yeah, this is not looking good. <laughs> this is not looking good for the good guys. No ball lining is big. Let's take one. I guess we're gonna have to send back this angel for as long as possible. Vortex. Oof. All right, let's find a swamp. Let's find a swamp, shall we? Gonna have to destroy this Vortex Scroll. Play the planes and send the turn back. Unfortunately, I can't even deploy this Exalted Angel. Like, I have to wait until I have the full four, the full six mana. Quite brutal. I think I'm actually going to cycle Furnace, exiling my own Angel is my, if my opponent doesn't facilitate me being able to cycle this, which definitely feels bad. Okay. Yeah, let's cycle here. So bad, but I need to find a Black Source right now. Just don't have time. It's not it. Already taking four from the Vortex. Oh, ugh. Vomit. I'm gonna get scroll here. Lava dart and scroll. Please don't reveal a fire blast. Oh, mountain. Okay. Opponent is kind of out of gas. So I'm at a virtual eight, seven, minus two is five, minus one is four, scroll is three. So I guess I need to find a swamp exactly this turn and it needs to be basic swamp. It cannot be a dual land. It's not looking great. This is of course assuming that somehow this angel doesn't die, right? Not quite. Ha, huh. so this is actually kind of cute. So we can put this ability on the stack, hold priority, and then target the wooded foothills. What this does is it gives me a target for the furnace to cycle, and then it forces my opponent to use the lava dart right now. And still, because the ability is on the stack, we're going to be able to exile the lava dart. So this is a pretty neat little little trick that we can pull off here. We can we can of course not target the lava dart because my opponent can just exile it in response, and then we are we're dead, right? 
Um, that incinerate is lethal though, so... Okay, we were not getting there anyway. Let's bring in the cop, the warmth, aura of silence, disenchant. And I want engineered plague, cut wrath of god, I want to cut one skeleton's crying. Maybe even bring in the smother here. And I do think furnace is fine. I guess I'm gonna cut down to one scrying. Cut down a vindicate, maybe dragon. Actually, maybe dragons are better than decree. And what? I guess two vindicates. Let's get two vindicates, one aura. Maybe I should be cutting dust bowl. This time we're on the play. Yeah, we'll probably need something better than this. This one I'll keep. So I think I'm gonna bot on the Caves of Coilos. And I'm gonna lead on turn one to rest. Uh, yeah. Let's take the Vortex here. And then we can drop the Warmth on two. Turn one pop for my opponent. Strong start. Okay, so they drew a mountain. I'm gonna be able to de rest the Incinerate, which is nice. Swing for two. You know, they get to plow that as well. That's nice. Yeah, so... Do I duress here? I think I'm actually gonna drop Circle of Protection. Like, duress only deals one damage anyway. And now that I have this cop red in play, we can check the Jackal Pup. Probably still going to plow the Pup anyway. So, cop red targeting the Pup. Take one. So, duress you. And we just take the Incinerate. We take the Instant Speed card there, I think. So now the goal... I'm gonna save this Vindicate specifically for another Sulfuric Vortex. Kind of the only card that matters. And here, cop the Pup. I think I'm actually gonna cop the Fanatic as well. This means that I give my opponent a window to resolve the Flame Rift. But if they do, I only take two, so that seems fine to me. Yeah, so they drop a Seal of Fire, but no Flame Rift. Alright, ship the turn back. Would love to find a Dragon. I think I'm just gonna plow the pup here, so I don't have to worry about this anymore, it frees up my mana. We're chilling at 23. Reflecting pool is nice. We don't care about price of progress. Curse scroll. Okay, that's one that we're probably gonna have to. Codalless damage. How do you dare, opponent? How do you dare? It's a swamp. Vindicate your scroll. So now we're at a spot where we need to find probably dragon being the best one. Opponent serves. Activate circle. Business as usual. Untap. Gerard's Verdict. It's pretty sexy. I'd like to take those cards from your hand, please. Especially if one of them is a land. Lightning Bolt, Flame Rift. Holding on to that Barbering. I mean, they can they can cash it in now if they want. They finally have... They can force the action on it, but I don't have to. Like, I'm chilling at 25. We seem to be in a healthy spot. Dragon, one time. No. Okay, this is gonna go on for a while. <laughs> this game's gonna go on for quite a bit. Some cop action. And the passing of the turn, and now we go. We have Vortex already locked up. Also, funnily enough, we're ahead on clock. Just cop. Cop a little bit. Swamp. I mean, I'm taking lands because that means that when I finally draw a dragon or an angel, I can drop it and then still have a bunch of mana to use to circle protection. Hey, there we go. So now that we finally found a dragon, now we can start actually pulling ahead. Grim Lavamancer. That one's gonna die. Up there, up there, plow there, upkeep, dragon, play a land, ship the turn, another mog, that is just fine. Opponent continues porting me, I'm just gonna cycle right now, it just doesn't matter. But we're just gonna get to a point where we're gonna be able to deploy a dragon with a bunch of mana up, and my opponent is just not gonna be able to overwhelm me. Now we draw decree, I guess, so we can... Probably do better even. We can just play a bunch of 1-1 one -one dudes. Cop there. Cop there. Playing Cycling on end step. And now we're just going to... Oops, through our upkeep. So unlucky. And we're just going to... I think we're just going to cycle during combat. Leaving, what, 3 mana up? I mean, I can just leave no mana up at all. How brave am I? Just 1 mana up. Just do not get cheesed. Another angel is pretty good. With only four cards in hand, my opponent cannot beat Warmth and a Cop Red, right? So Okay, so that one worked out pretty well. Now let's go on to last game, and I'm gonna keep this hand. Maybe, maybe I'm getting baited, and I should not be keeping this, but we have a decent curve. We're doing some stuff. This seems like a fine keep. Engineer Plague, not great. We can kill all future Bow Linings, which is something, I guess. If I'm doing that... I think so ball lining is an elemental the question is because if i do that yeah i think i have to plow now so i plow now take only one from the mog 
if my opponent has uh, this means I can get I get verdict on two and then we can from there I guess my opponent hit, gets one turn where they can hit me with a ball lining but even if they play lava Mancer, I can just play plague on human and we're early in the game where ooh fire blast and bolt those are some good hits two mana gain seven don't mind if I do okay did not get hit by the ball lining I mean I have to just guess here. I'm just gonna name Elemental. It's just what hits the hardest. Obviously my opponent can just draw, you know, whatever, like a, like a pop or something like that, and that would be punishing, but opponent reveals Barbarian Ring and I take two. Then they play the ring and Seal of Fire. Oh, I messed that up. I should have played the Dust Bowl to blow up the Seal of Fire. I guess I'm gonna spend this turn to cycle. I am kind of looking forward to finding... Oh, they have another Barbarian Ring. That's funny. That's a Foothills. Yeah, I'm gonna spend my mana this turn, I think. Just put a 1-1 one, one into play, not very impressive, but it allows me to dig a little bit deeper. It's worse with Plowshares. Okay, play Dust Bowl. Let's swing. Imagine my opponent's gonna Curse Crawl here. I'm just going to Dust Bowl the Barb Ring while the getting is good. Pitching in the planes. Maybe I should have played the Capes of Coilos on turn 4 so I could sack it to the Dust Bowl. I think it's close. So we're, we have to find something before my opponent just finishes me off with this Curse Crawl nonsense. We do need to find something somewhat quickly. Flame Rift. It's a lot of damage. Okay, they're getting off of Curse Crawl this turn. That's a good one. That's definitely a good one. My opponent probably needs to pop the seal now. They don't. Interesting. So they missed out on a... Curse Scroll activation this past turn because they could have played the land activated on Flame Rift. I guess if they do that, then they don't get the Barbarian Ring, but I mean, that's kind of fine. They still get two damage out of the deal and they force me to use the Dust Bowl on my turn. Can I find a creature? So for one. Uh, so I'm going to hold on to this land for now because that can be a gain three if I find uh, Gerard's Verdict. So Furtic Vortex is the card. Kind of brutal, huh? Untap. <laughs> Another Cop Red. Gross. So they cannot actually deploy that Vortex. I don't think I should duress here, because if I duress, then that puts me in a spot where... I mean, maybe maybe I should be duressing, because then whatever my opponent draws, they can just deploy. We can gain life with Swords of Plowshares, but it's not it's not great. Eternal Dragon. <sighs> I think you're exactly one turn too, one turn too short, because I'm dead next turn. Exactly one turn too late. And there's no way I can get around this. Because even I'm one mana short of like casting dragon and just plowing it. Yeah, that's exactly one turn too late. I feel like I would have feel like I would have been fine if I had drawn the dragon one turn earlier. I guess my opponent just holds on to the pup in hand. So we're probably still screwed, but would have been closer at least. If these were verdict instead of duress, we would also have been able to you know, verdict ourselves to gain six. But yeah, cop red was not enough. Finally enough, disenchant is what I was looking for. I mean, technically my opponent can make a mistake here and fetch on my end step, but they've been playing well, so I don't expect them to. <laughs> All right, we're dead. Uh, yeah, this matchup's pretty good. It was, it's pretty bad, I meant. Um, it was very close, yeah. One turn too slow. <laughs> cool stuff, so there you go. Another league with black-white control. 4-2 is a pretty decent record. I think that uh, this league kind of played out exactly as expected. We won the matchups where I thought that we were fairly favorite to like a heavy favorite. And then matchups like Burn, which have always been a problem for the deck and that I've been trying to, to fix for a while since the very beginning. Uh, those are the challenging ones, right? I do think that uh, the changes that I made are pretty good overall. I, I did like having access to four dragons as opposed to the fourth angel. I feel like this is a very positive change. Uh, main decking the four verdicts as opposed to three verdicts plus a disenchant. I also think it's a pretty good change. Uh, we did get punished for doing that again, like, like, like stasis, but still. I do think that uh, I like the, the, the current 60 at least. As far as the cyborg goes, uh, you know, I could see things going any other way, right? Like we, we have so many options in white and black, which are arguably the two best colors in terms of cyborg cards in, in the entire format. So the fact that we have access to both of these colors gives us like such endless possibilities uh, of like really good cyber alternatives. Uh, still waiting to see whether Planet Birth is even worth its inclusion, but uh, we'll get there sometimes. Uh, this is a very, very strong archetype, I think. I personally believe that it's the best control deck in the format. I think that it's good against the red-green oath deck, so if you're trying to 
metagame until uh, against the what in my opinion is the best deck in the format and like the new menace to be respected i think this deck actually has a pretty good uh, red green terror war matchup i feel like a lot of the angles that that deck attacks from are not very effective against uh, this deck which makes it uh, a pretty pretty good tool definitely a, a strong candidate for for like an, an anti metagame deck uh, then there's the fact that, you know, just eats the, the, the mid-range and control decks for breakfast and dinner, right? Um, one thing that I'm interested in is, like, the number of threats versus the number of, uh, like, you know, spells. The only thing that I could see changing from the main deck would be the Fraction Furnaces. I do think that this, car this card is very, very strong and it helps the deck in an angle that it struggles with, namely stuff like you know recursion from squee in survival decks and stuff like that and then obviously you know like certain combo decks that the furnace is very good against but um this is definitely a card that you could cut or just move on to the sideboard and that could uh, allow you to shore up uh, some other specific matchups that you may want some help in if you think that you're going to be facing a lot of i don't know like goblins you can maybe like main deck an infest or maybe like another wrath of god maybe main deck i don't know like an engineer plague like this is not a crazy thing to do either i think that uh, there's a lot of room for customization as long as the engine becomes largely unchanged uh, the, the engine you know like the good cards is what i mean like the source of flashers the duresses the vindicates like these are the cards that i think are are like the best that that make the deck good it's because your raw power level in your cards is very very strong i also think that skeleton scrying is a huge part of the puzzle and it's a great reason why this deck is good at all the fact that we have access to like such a powerful main deck uh, card advantage card is is a really big deal i don't think we ever want to be playing the fourth copy but i do think that you know as far as the furnace goes th there's there are thoughts for Furnace is nice in how it fits in the curve, but like having access to an extra threat could be interesting. Then there are certain cyber cards that I think are worth exploring, like for example, uh, Wall of Hope, I think is the name of the card. I think that this card could be worth including in, in a burn heavy m metagame. I'm also very skeptical about it as well, because like your opponent has entire agency over how effective this card is which is not really where you want to be but having access to like a turn one card that you can drop and then all of a sudden your opponent's jackal pups are not going to have an easy time or like your opponent needs to like bolt your your wall in order to be able to get through in the first place i feel like that could be a big deal it could also just suck so you know like as we saw in, in the game that in the games that we lost against burn we lost because our opponent had like a more attrition -y hand and then like our cards just did not line up well against that. I don't know if Wall of Hope is exactly the fix to that problem. I think that, uh, you know, having access to more Vindicate style cards could be, but there's no more Vindicate. So like you need to kind of choose whether you want to have uh, answers to creatures versus answers to, you know, spells in like the Cop Reds and the Worms or like answers to, you know, Curse Crawl, which is a card that single-handedly killed us in that very last game. So I feel like there's a lot of balancing that can be done with this, and there's a lot of experimentation to, to go with it. But um, yeah, I think that it's a very strong deck. It has been putting up uh, results uh, semi-consistently lately, and I think that uh, as long as the, 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 the metagame continues to evolve, we're going to see that. Uh, Decree of Pain is another interesting card that I saw some people uh, messing around with which I think, uh, like, this is actually one of my all-time favorites because I remember, like, having this card when I was a kid and just blowing my mind how how powerful it was. And the fact that you can, you know, uncounterable minus two, minus two to everything can be pretty, pretty nasty. And it's not crazy to cast it for eight mana. Obviously, that's not why you have it, but definitely an interesting uh, thought especially if you're expecting some number of landstill although landstill is already an extremely good matchup for us so i don't know probably not even worth trying to consider that i do think that infest costing you know three as opposed to five is gonna make the better card but like still like there, there's a lot of cards that are worth thinking about and like worth discussing or talking then you know that's how our silence came, came up right so this and this card has actually been really good so 
I feel like there's a lot of, of, of that, like tinkering and trying stuff out and seeing what sticks. That's going to be it for me today, folks. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and long live Primover. See you next time.